back before the Mighty Raptor 700, the YFZ and TRX 450s, before the Z400 and short-lived Cannondale 400 and 440 models, four strokes were evolving from work and trail machines into true high-performance ATVs. It took from 1981 when Hana introduced the three-wheeled two-stroke ATC 250R until 1998 when Honda released the four-stroke four-wheeled 400EX for four strokes to be taken seriously by high-performance ATV enthusiasts. When Honda introduced the 1985 ATC 350X, it was the largest displacement sport ATV you could buy. Honda wasn't afraid to mention the word's performance or adrenaline in their marketing of the X, and they even called it the King of the Hill. The images used in the 350X's advertisements and brochures depicted it as a performance off-road machine, and Honda was quick to let everyone know when their big thumper found success in cross-country racing. Impending lawsuits and pressure from the Consumer Product Safety Commission sent the 350X into early retirement after just two short years. As a machine highly regarded by those who've owned them and left with a legacy that never had the chance to be fulfilled, we believe that the 1985-86 Honda ATC 350X is a classic ATV that deserves some modern day recognition. To put the 350X to the test, we needed a machine that ran well enough to show us what the old Honda was made of, without potentially trashing someone's museum piece. We acquired a nice 1985 Honda 350X that was all stock, with the exception of a slip-on Supertrap exhaust and a set of nicely worn Maxxis Razor tires. Nicely worn is a good thing on a three-wheeler as it lets you slide through the corners more easily. We felt that having two of the most common performance modifications would actually allow us to better evaluate the machine. Next, we needed an experienced three-wheeler rider to pilot our X, so we acquired the services of vintage three-wheeler motocross racer Rob Ray and the use of his crazy backyard motocross track and trail. When the 350X hit the market, its 350cc air-cooled four-stroke engine wasn't only the largest available in an ATV, its design was close to state-of-the-art. The big single cylinder featured a four-valve single overhead cam head design. Its bore and stroke measured in an 81 by 68 millimeters with a compression ratio of 8.5 to 1. Compare that to the 11.8 to 1 found on the 2014 YFZ450R. The engine was claimed to produce 26.4 horsepower at 7,000 RPMs and 21.7 foot-pounds of torque at 6,000 RPMs. That put the X within 6 horsepower of the legendary 1985 ATC 250R, but with more torque spread across a broader RPM range. Honda matched the top end with a 6-speed manual transmission. Reverse was available at the time on machines like Honda's Sport Utility 250SX, but not on a sport machine like the X. Starting the portly 91.5 pound motor was made easy thanks to Honda's automatic decompression system. Good thing, as starting the X without it requires a lot of enthusiasm. The biggest change to the 86 350X came in the motor department. The 1985 motor had an issue circulating oil when the engine was rotated backwards, like while climbing steep hills or riding wheelies. Honda remedied this in 86 with a new oil pickup point and revised oil pump. When you ride the 350X, you quickly realize that this motor was something special for its time. It delivers instant power right off idle, followed by a strong, smooth mid-range rush, after which the power starts tapering off. Shifting early is the key to going fast on the 350X, which is good, as this engine is not equipped with a rev limiter. The bore and stroke combination, working in tandem with the four valve head design, yields snappy throttle response and a willingness to build RPMs in a hurry. To ride fast, you have to slide three wheelers through turns. With tons of torque and an engine that responds well to throttle input, breaking the rear end loose for slides is no problem on the big four stroke. It pulls hard out of corners, often sliding while carrying the front end in the air. There's plenty of power for attacking wooded trails, conquering big inclines, or hauling in wide open spaces. All the while, 
the engine's built-in counterbalancer keeps vibration levels down. With this motor in a 322-pound machine, we can see how it could give two strokes of the time fits on the trail, and on the track for that matter, with the right motor and chassis setup. If anything kept the 350X from being viewed as the first high-performance four-stroke ATV ever produced, it was the chassis and suspension. While the motor was pretty high-tech, the chassis was underbuilt compared to the ATC 250R. While the 250R used primarily 1 and 8 inch diameter mild steel tubing, the 350X used mainly 3 quarter inch tubing. This resulted in a frame with more flex and less durability than the 250R. One unique aspect of the X's chassis is its air intake duct, up by the head tube. This channeled air down to the airbox, making the 350X a virtual submarine. The 350X featured a 23 degree head tube angle, an overall width of 43.9 inches, and a wheelbase of 50 inches. With a low seat height of 29.5 inches, the dimensions add up to a very sporty machine for its time. The 350X received suspension nearly on par with the second generation 83-84 ATC 250R. It was far and above anything being used on other four-stroke three-wheelers at the time, with 8 inches of travel up front and 7.6 inches out back. Compared to the 85 250R though, the X was lacking, as the R sported 9.8 inches of travel at both ends. The forks featured air pressure adjustability. Although the technology was far from perfect, and the idea of air shocks went away for about 20 years, we added an inch of preload to the fork springs with PVC, and installed 20 weight fork oil, set at 5.5 inches from the top of the tubes. The rear suspension featured a linkageless design, the shock was preload adjustable with 17-way compression and 4-way rebound damping adjustment. While the compression damping was pretty effective, the rebound damping offered minimum adjustment. We ran rebound at the softest setting to help the machine track in whoops. Handling on the 350X is a blast, especially in the right environment. Tight woods with lots of twists and turns. The X has a light front end thanks to a relatively short swing arm. This makes it a wheelie monster. Floating the front end over bumps or raising it for trail obstacles is no problem, although it is perhaps a little too wheelie prone when exiting turns. When you really push the chassis, you feel the frame flexing and twisting beneath you, hammering out of corners. It may not have been a big deal at the time, but if you're used to riding modern sport quads, it's pretty apparent. The X seems to do a good job of going where it's pointed, as long as you get your weight forward to keep the front tire in contact with the ground. Stability in turns and on side hills is pretty much on par with other high-performance machines at the time. High-speed stability is pretty predictable as well, so while the X is a woods weapon, it's also a lot of fun in wide open spaces. In spite of being a wheelie king, the X is a capable climber. Tuck in and gas it, the front end feels predictable on steep climbs. The big thumper flies straight and predictably off of jumps. Although the X weighs around 30 pounds more than the ATC 250R, it's not extremely detectable. It feels lighter than you would expect, both in the air and on the ground, due to the fact that most of the extra weight is centralized in the heavy metal motor. Suspension on the X is so-so. The forks do a good job of soaking up roots and bumps on the trail, providing the type of plushness that lets you ride all day. The rear shock doesn't quite share the fork's compliance. On the track, you can really feel the smaller diameter 35mm forks flexing in the whoops and landing off big jumps. The forks find their limits when you start flat landing or come up short. The rear end comes alive in mid-size hits, but can't quite cope with less than perfect landings once you start going big on jumps. You can have some fun on the track, but the X's suspension is at home on the trail. Today, we get all excited when sport quads come with dual piston calipers. Well, the 350X had them in 1985. The dual piston front and single piston rear calipers gave the machine good stopping power, although we're pretty sure that the test of time had taken some feeling out of our machine's brakes. Stepping aboard the 350X is like stepping aboard a machine from another planet. 
It's almost like riding a kid's big wheel in comparison to a modern day machine. The seating position feels uncomfortably low. This makes the transition from sitting to standing difficult, especially on long rides. It's difficult to tuck in alongside the machine to counterweight for corners, so larger riders will often find their rear ends sitting on the fender. The low seating position makes the handlebars feel all jacked up and chopper-like while sitting. Standing in the attack position, the 350X feels pretty comfortable, with a nice relationship between the bars and foot pegs. As was typical of the time, the 350X pegs were narrow, uncomfortable, and didn't provide good feeling by today's standards. The X came littered with other mentionables, like Honda's adjustable width rear axle. One enhanced instability? No problem. The swing arm featured Honda's revolutionary round housing chain adjustment system, which made chain adjustment a breeze. The aluminum rims, which came stock, were light and strong, and something only found on serious sport machines at the time. Looking back, the 350X's motor was so good that it found its way into many hybrid race quads throughout the late 80s and early 90s. However, in its day, the 350X's chassis and suspension kept it from being taken seriously by many racers, with the exception of those looking to be different by racing a four-stroke. Had Honda paired the 350X motor with a chassis and suspension setup on par with the ATC or TRX 250Rs, such a machine would have been deadly serious in the hands of amateur and professional racers alike, and perhaps the four-stroke revolution would have come about 13 years sooner for ATVs. Today in 2013, the X can still be found on the used market in good running condition. Amazingly, there are still a number of aftermarket and performance shops offering parts for the Mighty Thumper. If you ever wanted to own a classic, the 8586 Honda ATC 350X is a machine worth picking up and restoring.